time. We carry it within us, our body is subdued to it, but our thoughts as well try to kidnap us from the present moment. The future is planned meticulously and we brood over the past. This ability is an integral part of humanity and has led to great inventions, but it is becoming an increasing burden for many people. Eastern traditional practices such as meditation are a suitable means for many to find their way back into the here and now, to feel themselves again and leave the thought bubble. Is meditation able to bring us closer to the present, helping us to temporarily refrain from the demands that time places on us? And what is the foundation of this millennia-old practice? Leaving the everyday perception of time is rooted in the traditions of many cultures. Techniques and rituals that have been passed on through generations are intended to broaden awareness for a more comprehensive perception of time. In the Buddhist scriptures, human perception of time is described by the image of a continuously flowing river called Samtana. In Hermann Hesse's tale Siddhartha, the figure of the same name comes to a river and, after looking closely, comes to the premonition anyone who understood this water and its secrets, it seemed to him, would understand a lot of other things, many secrets, all secrets. He saw this water ran and ran, it kept running and yet it was always there, was always the same and always knew. After a few weeks in which this impression has been consolidated, Siddhartha asks the ferryman Vasudeva living on that river whether he feels the same way. Did you learn that secret from the river that there is no time? And Vasudeva answers, yes Siddhartha, it is this what you mean, that the river is everywhere at the same time at the source and at the mouth, at the waterfall, at the ferry, at the rapids, in the sea, in the mountains, everywhere at the same time, and that for the river there is only the present, not the shadow of the past, not the shadow of the future. In a pictorial manner, Hesse here describes a fundamental conviction of Indian religions. The world in the physically oriented perception can only be experienced in its instantaneousness, which in turn is an indication for its irreality. Mahayana Buddhism interprets the human relationship with time in particularly clear terms. Time is here only considered a pragmatic postulate with the purpose of communication within the constructs of human thought. However, it has no equivalent in actual reality. Buddha, the name of the historical founder of religion is Siddhartha Gautama, holds the only hope, the only way to heal, because he brings to man the revelation of Dharma, the absolute reality, which lies in the constant everlasting present. Everything that is temporal is unreal. Buddha says, Name so atta, but this I am not. All being is one, like the river, but appears different in every moment, in every place. Likewise, Buddha is unitary, not composed, without time. In this sense, Buddha cancels the idea of things as changing within time. Everything is already what it was and will be. Time, space and thus movement are described synonymously in this context. Buddha, for example, as the one whose thought is fixed. This principle of timelessness should manifest in the contemplation of the yoga adept and give him or her a distance from the ever-changing physical world. In this lies the liberation from the human condition, which is fixed on external circumstances. Timelessness, therefore, in Buddhism is an important aspect of salvation. On the way there, the yogi practices in stopping the endless cycle of thought and to not lose the moment. And he or her might be enlightened in this very present.